Hello and welcome to episode 2 of this Paramix Discovery Beginner's Guide video tutorial series. My name is Malcolm Calvert, I'm based in Edinburgh in Scotland and the director of Paramix Microsimulation and it's a great pleasure to be able to uh, share with you really an introduction to Paramix and hopefully help you learn some of the basics so that you can get started as quickly and easily as possible. Now, in the last episode, we looked at opening an existing model, navigating around, finding our way around the product. Uh, we also looked at how we can switch different objects on and off in the workspace, and how we can move them, delete them, and edit them. Now, in episode two, today, we're going to look at creating a model from scratch. So we're going to learn how to add objects into our network how to link them together and start to build up the road network and the various roads and junctions that go with that. So there should be lots in this episode that's useful and interesting to you. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is launch Paramix Discovery. And like last week, I'm going to do that from the uh, desktop icon. Uh, this is Paramix Discovery 21. Uh, and it's available as a free trial from our website um, if you haven't already downloaded it. Okay, now that uh, brings me to my welcome screen and we've got two options on there, create a new model or open an existing one. Now, last week we opened an existing model to have a look around it and this week we're going to create a new model. So I simply click on create a new model and it brings me into this uh, dialogue here where I've got a few options. Now the first thing is to give the model a name, so I'm just going to call it New Model. I can then choose a traffic direction, left hand or right hand traffic. I'm going to stick with left hand traffic, that's what I'm more familiar with uh, in the UK. And I can choose a location where I want to, uh, to put that model. So I'll choose a folder that's on my desktop. I can also then decide if I want to save a project folder um, or just the dot paramics file um, and I like to choose the project folder um, which can be quite useful for storing other information associated with the model but it's up to you uh, what you'd like to do so once I hit create um, that will create a project folder for me and it's also then uh, creating the new model inside that and launching that model as well so this is the uh, my new model to work with and it's essentially a blank canvas for me to build on. And I'll just quickly show you uh, behind the scenes what's been created. So I've got my new model folder and the new model dot paramix file which is what I'll be working in. So here's my new model and it's time to start uh, creating the road network in this model. Now the first thing we need to think about when creating the road network is what we're going to build it on or base it on. So we need some kind of uh, geographical mapping data to do that. And in Paramix Discovery that's called an overlay. And we can import overlays through the Edit Network menu. So if I go to Edit Network, Import and Overlays and click on that. Now I've got an overlay in this folder called Linden Town, so I just need to select it. And the format that we use in Paramix Discovery is a DXF file. Um, so I'll open that. So it's loaded my DXF file into Paramix Discovery. And what that's giving me is some detailed uh, geographical data on which to build my road network. So you can get a, a sense of the level of detail that we've got in here. So now we've got our overlay in the model we're going to look at how we start to build our road network on that overlay. And in Paramix Discovery, the road network is made up of really two main building blocks that are called nodes and links. So we're going to have a look now at how we add nodes and links into the model. Now nodes are uh, single points that are used to represent a change in the network. So a node can be used for a junction, for example, it can also be used where there's a change in the speed limit or maybe a change in the number of lanes that are being used. And then links join those nodes together. So the links are essentially the road itself and they carry the properties of the road like the speed limit. So let's have a look at how we add a node first of all. And I'm going to scroll down to 
this section of my model. I'm just going to minimize the properties and the styles. Um, I want to add a node at this junction and to do that I will go to my toolbar at the top of the screen and this button is called add a node and it tells me that if I click in the workspace it will add a node so I'm going to select that button now when I hover into the workspace you'll notice that the cursor has changed uh, to this crosshair and that means that I'm going to be able to add a, an object in this case a node when I click so I'm going to click here and it creates a node and it automatically numbers that one for me. Now the reason I've added my node there is because it's at the intersection of the midlines of these uh, two roads here. That doesn't really matter um, if we get this too accurately at this stage because we'll be able to move it very easily at a later stage if we need to. So that's my first node added and I'm going to add a few more nodes in so I'm going to put some um, at the edges of the network down here, over here, and I'll pop another one in at that junction. So I've created four nodes in my model. Now I can see those more clearly by toggling the overlay on and off, uh, and I'm using the hotkey O to do that. So with my nodes in place now, it's time to look at adding links to join those together. And I can do that by going to my link toolbar button, which is beside the node. And when I hover over that, it tells me a little bit of information about how to add links into the model. Now there's several different ways to do this. They're all very easy and I'll go through each of them now. The first one is to join the nodes together. Now when I get close to a node, um, my cursor will snap to that node. And then I simply click to start my link there and then snap to an end node and finish it there. And I'll do that for these sections of the network as well. So that's the first method is essentially joining the dots between nodes and there's a snap tool uh, that's very useful to help with that. Another method is to create links into a blank workspace. So let's say I want to create a link in here. I simply click to start the link and click again to end it. And that automatically creates nodes at the start and end. And then the other methods are somewhere in between those two. So one is to start at a node and end in the workspace. And another would be to start in the workspace and end at the node. Whichever way you choose to do this, they're all very simple and straightforward. So we've looked at how we add single links uh, into the network, but we can also add several links in one go. And that's achieved through the next toolbar button along. So if I hover over that, it tells me a little bit about how that can be used on the network. And if I click on it, I can uh, then use it. Now it's a similar method to adding individual links. It just means we can add um, several at the same time. But again, I can start with a node, uh, I can join to another node, and then I could go into the workspace, for example. Now this time, to complete the series of several links, you double click at the end. Um, so let's say I want to add in a few on this section. I'll start at that node, and I'll click a few times, and double click, and that completes my series of links. And I'll just add one up here and double click again to complete my series of links. So you can see already how these two core objects in Parameters Discovery, nodes and links, can really be used to shape the model uh, very quickly and easily. So that's all we're going to cover in this episode. We've had a look at how we load in our overlay, how we add nodes and how we add links in different ways into the model. So what we'll do is attach this overlay into the comments uh, underneath the video so that you can get access to it. And please uh, have a go at creating nodes and links and starting to see uh, the structure of your model taking shape. And then next week, we're going to look at how we can change some of the properties of those links, uh, adding in extra lanes, adding some curves to them instead of just straight links 
uh, and really start to bring some definition to this model. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much. Bye.